Obviously, we're here today to talk about the Electric 172. Cessna's role is primarily in the area of technical support. Uh, we're providing structural data, uh, weight and balance analyses, uh, engineering details such as uh, bolt strengths and uh, skin thicknesses. Uh, and we're very encouraged by the test results to date. Um, we do see great potential for electric propulsion systems in general aviation aircraft. Uh, but this is primarily a bi-energy program, and uh, I'll just turn it over to uh, George to elaborate on that. We want to publicly express our gratitude to Cessna for the forward vision that they share with us as we look to the technologies of the future. A rather interesting statistic, 48% of us expect to fly an electric airplane in our lifetime. And I think that's a reflection on a society and a culture that has begun to take in the, the advantages of this new technology. I think one of the primary things we, we want to reflect on is that while this is an R&D project, and the company together with Cessna has gone from conceptual engineering early this year to detailed design, that hardware is coming in, and for the first time uh, this last week, we have power on the motors, and functional hardware tests are underway, so significant uh, milestones being accomplished as we get ready and look forward to the uh, coming months where we'll begin taxi tests and, and first flight. One of the things that we also want to mention here is as we note the progress of the engineering team, the functional tests and so forth underway, and the cooperation and support that we're getting with with Cessna is that uh, this is a Part 23 certified approach. So we are trying to make a difference in revitalizing this industry that we all love so very much with the technology as applied to certified mainstream aviation. Part 23 certified on an, on an airplane that's bar none, the most popular aircraft of all time. And so when we talk about the Cessna 172, a great platform for many reasons, but also a great trainer. And the initial two-hour approximate uh, endurance with the airplane is just right with the training aircraft, the point of entry for the next generation of pilots. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. The conventional 172 on the one hand, the new configuration on the other, you see a pretty radical change right away in the propeller. Multi-blade, composite, light. We don't have the structural issues with the vibration, as Charlie was pointing out, with the cylinder, the torque, and so forth that goes through there. So a very smooth uh, propeller. You don't, don't have some of the issues that we had before. The root of the propeller is now providing thrust, whereas before, of course, it was important to uh, contribute to the cooling of the internal combustion engine. You'll notice the cowl as we move uh, back. The cowl is much, much more streamlined now. We don't have the big shoulders required for the air inlet to, to keep the cylinders uh, cool. About a 10 to 14 percent parasite drag reduction there uh, with that aspect. Continue to move back. Instead of that cowl being full of conventional engine, of course, now we have a small electric motor and some batteries there. Again, as Charlie points out, weight and balanced, absolutely unaffected. On top of the wing, you see the collection of solar energy. On the wing tips, you see the collection of vortex energy on the, off the wing tips. And then as we decelerate or descend, we collect energy back through the propeller. So when we speak of an electric hybrid Cessna 172, we're speaking to 
the convention of collecting supplemental energy from multiple sources, a very eloquent energy system to uh, provide propulsion for the 172. So our focus in the R&D effort is the electric systems, of course. But the way the backbone of the system is set up is that we can literally plug in, if you will, uh, to be simplistic, to plug in the APU and provide that, uh, that uh, extra electric energy from a uh, heavy fuel, uh, jet fuel based uh, APU. The lithium ion batteries are an energy reservoir. And it's so important to understand that we're collecting supplemental energy as we go. So it's, it really is a reservoir that receives energy as well as, of course, uh, from the computer command uh, gives energy to provide thrust. Of course, the electric motor, the uh, auxiliary power unit uh, underneath there, and then a really new futuristic, if you will, in some, in some cases you might say a propeller that's idealized for electric propulsion, much more like a fan or, or a uh, forward fan section on a, on a turbo fan, for example, than, than perhaps what we think of as a propeller today. We're incorporating thin film photovoltaics on the top of the wing, collecting free solar energy. Most of us are VFR pilots in general aviation, so uh, a, a fun way to supplement the performance of the airplane. And then for those that live in rural America, in the, on a Wyoming ranch or Montana or, or places out, out west, uh, free recharging. Uh, two, two, three, four days, the airplane's recharged, and of course it's not even plugged in. So uh, a great, great capability for austere rural uh, logistics, if you will. Freedom through performance. At Sirius, performance is not simply the measurement of a single design parameter. Rather, it's a total package. It's optimum balance of speed, efficiency, comfort, safety, ease of flight, and quality. We call it Cirrus Flying 2.0. Aren't you ready to feel the freedom? I'm going to give a real quick overview as you look at the airplane up there of what we're doing. Very simply, we're taking about 400 pounds of uh, uh, conventional engine out of the airplane, replacing it with about a 40 to 45 pound uh, electric motor. So that'll give us about a 350 pound differential. We're taking out about 300 pounds of fuel and some other things out of the airplane. So one of the big questions that already exists is, is batteries. And we have about uh, 650 to 700 pounds of useful carrying capacity for batteries. And if you do the math, that gives us the one and a half to two hour duration that George is talking about in our proof of concept airplane. It will be initially a two seat airplane as technology evolves. Also another really significant point as we were looking at different airframes to use, we will not be changing the center of gravity by a fraction of an inch. We will be operating at a gross weight that is the same or lower than the current gross weight of a Cessna 172. All the performance will be the same and for those of you who aren't engineers or haven't really looked at it very much, we're taking an airplane that's 180 horsepower at sea level. Conventional engine has a lapse rate, uh, electric engine or electric motor doesn't, so 180 horsepower at sea level, where a conventional engine may be 155 to 160 horsepower, we're still going to be at 180, so we're actually going to pick up some performer ad advantages at altitudes, some cruise advantages. Also, as you can see, the higher reliability and safety, uh, the, an electric motor uh, has between 20 and 30,000 hours of operational capability. As you know, most general aviation uh, engines today are 2,500 to 3,000 hours. One moving part versus about 950 moving parts. Vibration will be reduced, uh, stress, all kinds of things all the way across the board. Lower cost of purchase and operating costs, uh, a lot of questions that we get and we aren't refined to the point yet that we can give you an accurate fully uh, full up cost to do it, but we are targeting about the cost of a replacement gold standard engine will be the cost it'll cost to convert your 172 right now. So you go from the conventional engine to the electric powered 172 at about the same, at about a push in cost for an overhaul. The other piece is the operating cost. We've got a future slide that we'll show you up there with the current cost of electricity at its worst case and the current cost of fuel at its best case 
we go more than half reduction in operating costs, and on the average, we'll be able to reduce operating costs between 75 and 80 percent. So instead of operating an airplane at 55 or 60 dollars an hour, we'll be operating down somewhere below 10 dollars an hour in, in, in operating costs that you'll put on the on the machine. The first airplane is strictly a demonstrator proof of concept, and it will be flying. We're going to we started the program February 18, 2010, officially on that particular airplane. Our rollout will be in the first quarter of next year. Our first taxi is going to be in the first quarter of next year. And we're going to be flying in the spring of next year. That airplane is a proof of concept demonstrator, two place, uh, basic airplane, doesn't have the vortex energy recovery devices, regenerative drag devices, all the other things that we're doing. It will strictly be a battery and a motor. We'll be flying the airplane a lot of different air shows uh, in the spring and summer of next year. At the same time, our phase two, we're incorporating all the hybrid technology. So. The first airplane you see will be about an hour duration airplane. The airplane that we'll be doing the STC kit on is about two hours, and we wanted to get started uh, as the technology was evolving. We didn't want to hold the program back, so our first airplane will be about an hour's duration, just to answer your question. But the STC that we're going to put out is going to be about two hours, and you can look for the airplane uh, flying all over the country. I'll stick my foot in my mouth, or I'll either be a prophetic individual. You'll see it a lot next year flying around.